Gibson, but as I sat over there and listened to all these extraordinary people being honored, so many of them that made such a difference in my life, I was really frustrated that Carol and I were last on the uh, <laughs> program. But then, thinking of all the things Carol's taught me through the years, one of them is always see the best in every situation, because those of you that know me know that I'm extremely competitive. So, really, Mark and Patricia, thank you very much for saving the best for us. <laughs> it's a great honor to present Carol Sackler this well-deserved recognition and into the prestigious Maryland Community School called Distinction. Carol truly is a champion for everything Marion and Marion Community Schools. While well, I was concerned with administrative license in the 80s, Carol Sector in Marion Community Schools was used in my curriculum classes as an example of an urban school system that had developed and embraced a progressive, comprehensive curriculum that met the needs of all students K through 12. We witnessed it. I felt a sense of pride knowing that a teacher I admired so much as a young Baptist student at Justice Middle School was now a leader at the district level. What made it even more special, I was in a cohort group with 50 aspiring principals and only two women. We used our shoulders went back that day because there was a woman leading a big school system, one of the biggest in the state of Indiana. Carol is exactly the person all educators should inspire to be. She serves her community in the highest fashion. She believes in inclusiveness and advocates for all students. She's a passionate about her career pathway, public education. And she always has the courage to shout at the mountaintops. Carol will never understand the impact that she's had on thousands of students and education leaders, especially women. And now, Carol, your name and all your accomplishments will be in the history books and hang in the halls of Marion Community Schools for many years. Thank you, Carol, for being an outstanding role model for me, many students, and administrators. And thank you, Mary Community Schools, for honoring such an extraordinary American giant. Congratulations. Superstars, congratulations all. Um, I will treasure the curriculum guide for 19 years. Um, I guess I would say that one thing about being last, I am certain that there will be a wonderful round of applause when I finish. <laughs> and we will never know whether it was my speech or the fact that the speeches were over. <laughs> but I want to start this evening by sharing from a writing by Nadine Steer that in many ways could have been written about my life. It's called, If I Had My Life to Live Over. If I had my life to live over, I'd dare to make more mistakes next time. I'd relax, I would limber up, I would be sillier on my next trip. You see, I'm one of those people who live sensibly and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments. And if I had it to do over again, I'd have more of them. I've been one of those persons who never goes anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a raincoat, and a parachute. If I had it to do over again, I would travel lighter than I have. If I had my life to live over, 
I would go to more dances, I would ride more merry-go-rounds, and I would definitely pick more daisies. Preparing for this evening has given me an opportunity to reflect on my career and my life, and to think about what I have learned that I wish I had known sooner. So for the next few minutes, no more than five, <laughs> I am going to share my best ideas about what I would do differently if I could live my life over again. Not that I have a lot of regrets, just a normal amount, I think, but because I hope that by sharing my experiences, you might just do something different tomorrow in your own life. So first of all, figure out what is most important to you and keep that as the touchstone by which you judge everything that comes your way. If you want to figure out what your touchstone should be, I would suggest asking yourself the following questions. What do I really value? What does my faith expect of me? What do I think about as I get up each morning? My touchstones, clear to me now, are pretty simple. They are youth, education, equity, justice, and community. I learned that once you identify your touchstones, you can use that knowledge to guide most decisions and choices you make in your life. Once your touchstones are clearly established in your own mind, it is much easier to be selective and to stay focused. So my number one suggestion is to identify your touchstones and use them to focus your career decisions, your volunteer work, and your charitable giving. This suggestion also comes with the hope that you will all live long enough, as I have, to realize that community service is as challenging as important and as rewarding as what you do in your life to earn a living. Number two, allow yourself to be mentored and then be willing to mentor others. Accept wise advice from those who have started this journey before you. Let me say up front that I believe that women have a special obligation to mentor young women in their career field or in leadership positions in the community. But I also want to be clear that you should accept help from anyone that you admire in your field. I was extremely blessed to be mentored by some wonderful educators who apparently saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. For that, I will always be grateful. The second part of this is to mentor someone else. While this can certainly relate to your job, I want to also emphasize how important I think it is to be connected very personally to a child in your community not related to you. I strongly believe that if every adult would mentor a child, they would learn so much and have a much more realistic perspective. They would also likely be greatly challenged and wonderfully blessed by the experience. So lesson number two is that you leave something of yourself with each person with whom you interact and that someone is always watching and learning from you. Make sure that the message you, they give is the one you really wanted to send. Number three. Careers and community service will enrich you, but always make time in your life for family and friends. I have found balance to be one of the most important things in a good life and one of the hardest things to achieve. As I look back on my life and identify the times when I was most unhappy, I can tell you that most of those were times when my life was out of balance. Time when my work commitments were greater than my human commitments. Times when I was driven more by goals than by compassion. 
and times when achievement became the priority over what a friend or family member needed. So lesson number three is to make friends and family a priority. Enjoy them, laugh with them, and worship with them if you find that rewarding. Don't let yourself believe that your friends must always agree with you or that your religion or your connections give you a license to dictate their behavior. Love and appreciate what each friend or family member brings to your life. Thank you for supporting Marion's arts culture, athletic culture, and academic culture. And thank you for being here tonight. In closing, I would encourage you to be thankful for the growing years, the productive years, the quiet years, and the final years. And to remember that every one of life's seasons has its place. No one ever gets a chance to live every aspect of life over again. So make the best of every day you have. And always remember to pick more daisies. <laughs>